Okay, I want to get into talking about stunning. And one of the big problem areas is stunning boxes. Slipping on the floor. You need to have a non-slip floor in that stunning box. Another mistake that people make with stunning boxes is they make them too wide. And then you've got animals turning around. This is an Australian-designed uh, uh, head restraint device that works really well. And there's a lot of controversy about using head restraint devices to improve the accuracy of stunning. Because if you leave an animal in a head restraint device too long, it can be stressful. It's extremely important to design it and light it in such a way that your animal walks in, you clamp the head, boom, you do it. Don't ever let an animal stand and fight a head restraint device. If they just walk in and then you clamp it and instantly stun it, there'll be no additional stress. But if you have to prod it six or seven times to get it in and it's blocking, and then once you get him locked in, you let him stand there and fight it, then you're going to get elevated stress. Lighting is absolutely essential. You've got to have that lighting right. This is a side view drawing of a conveyor restrainer system that I designed. Now a big piece of equipment like this is appropriate in plants to slaughter over 100 cattle per hour. Under 100 cattle per hour, you can do a good job with a box, with a stunning box, or with some kind of a restraint device that's a box-like thing. But when you get over 100 an hour, you're just pushing it too fast. And the cattle ride along on a conveyor that they straddle. Now you'll notice there in that picture, there's kind of a solid hold down over the top of the cattle. And what that hold down does is it blocks their vision so they don't see people. Another principle is an animal entering this conveyor has got to have his back feet off the entrance ramp before you let him see out. A two foot difference in the length of that hold down is a difference between calm cattle and cattle going berserk in this system. Details of design are extremely important. I have a hard time impressing upon people the importance of small details that will make the animals calmer. This shows the animal going in. They straddle a bar. You might wonder, well, how do you get them to get in that thing? Why don't they balk at the bar? Well, it's the way the animal perceives it. The bar looks like it's part of the chute. Now, if I take a piece of paper and I drop a piece of paper in there, they'll balk. I drop a coffee cup in there, they'll balk but the bar looks like it's supposed to be there, so they walk over it. That's just animal behavior. Here's an animal sitting on the restrainer. Now the uh, thing that he's sitting on is a moving conveyor. Now you'll notice that that moving conveyor is designed to fit the animal's brisket. That's important. It's important that a restraint device be comfortable. If it's got pressure points or something gouging into the animal, he's gonna vocalize. And if he vocalizes in the restrainer, then it's hurting him. If you go out to the stunning area and you hear cattle mooing and bellowing and bellowing, you got something wrong out there. Vocalization scoring works for cattle and pigs really well. In fact, research in pigs has shown that the amount of squealing is related to the amount of stressed meat. Now, the one species where you don't use vocalization scoring is sheep. Sheep will vocalize just when they're talking to their buddies going up the chute. But cattle and pigs vocalize when something nasty gets done to them. Now notice that there's adjustable sides on this. You can adjust it for different sizes of animals. It's got to be adjusted right because if the animal feels any tendency to topple, he's going to panic and fight it. Fear of falling is a big fear. Now you see that kind of little roof thing right over the cattle's back? That's the hold down rack. And the length of that rack is very critical. You make it too short and they get excited. You make it longer, then it works just fine. Here's an animal just sitting in the conveyor, uh, sitting in there quietly. Now here is a little piece of rubber conveyor building, you know, blocking an animal's vision. See, this particular restrainer we had to use on great big bulls and small cows. Well, instead of having a bunch of hydraulic stuff to make it go up and down, I just put this little rubber flap there. And that keeps that wild Brahma cow in there. Now, if you let the rubber flap come off, you're going to have problems. But this is an example of using behavior to hold your animal rather than force. Animals riding through this system should ride quietly. And when they ride quietly, it makes them easy to stun. If the animals are throwing a great big fit, then it's going to make them hard to stun. 
They should just move through the system really quietly and really nicely. Now here somebody decided to put a hydraulic thing on there and shove the animal down. That's a wrong approach. What they had done wrong in this plan is they had made the hold down rack too short. Well, and the plant was calling me up saying they were having all these problems and I asked them, well, how long was the hold down rack? And, and it was two foot too short. So I asked them to lengthen it. And you can actually see a piece of metal on there where they lengthened it. I have gone into plants and just used cardboard. In fact, on the very first system that I ever worked on, we made the mistake of making it too short because we thought, well, we can stun them quicker if we make it short. And now yeah, I got in there, it was just terrible. And I'm going, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I went and got some cardboard and I laid it up there over the top of the system and lo and behold, it just calmed those cattle right down. That's using behavior to control them rather than force. Now I want to show you some animals I view into a restrainer. Solid sides. Now this happens to be a feedlot squeeze chute, but the reason I'm showing you this picture is because the lighting is perfect. I want to show you what the lighting should look like to get an animal into a head restraint. Solid on the sides, but he sees a lighted place to put his head. But he doesn't see any people up ahead. He just sees a lighted head hole. Now here's one that's too dark. They'll never stick their head in there. But you've got to get in there and see what are the animals actually seeing. And this is a head restraint device that I designed to use on the end of the center track restrainer. In the US, there's a plant using that for kosher slaughter. Uh, this system can also be used for holding the head for captive bolt stunning. These are the behavioral principles of restraint. You've got to block the vision. You've got to prevent the animal from seeing people up ahead. Also, you want to prevent the animal from seeing a place he can escape to until he's all the way held in a device and he gets the feeling of being held. Another principle with all restraint devices is slow, steady application of pressure. Slow, steady motion is calming. Sudden, jerky motion that's like, goes like this. That excites the animal. Also, there's an optimal pressure. You've got to make a restraint device tight enough to make them feel held, but not so tight that it hurts. The big mistake people make is the minute the animal struggles, they squeeze it tighter. That's wrong. The animal's balanced in the device and feels comfortable. He isn't going to struggle. Another principle is body restraint is a lot less aversive to the animal than head restraint. Once you put the animal's head into a head restrainer, stun it immediately. Or if you're doing ritual slaughter, do the ritual slaughter immediately. And a fourth principle is fear of falling. You've got to have non-slip flooring so the animal doesn't feel like he's going to fall. Or if you have a restrainer device where the animal's feet are off the ground, he's got to be held in there so he feels balanced and there's no tendency of to tip.